we've been yeah. together 13. Okay. And I feel like it was right around that time. I can't remember if you worked together while we were together or if I had just missed Rain. I think you guys were just getting together. It was around the time that we, so we stopped working together. But Nicole plus. was my amazing publicist for many years during my early uh, years launching in The Office and several movies that happened and some crazy tours. And um, it was just uh, a nutty time. And uh, you were so awesome. And it was so... Uh, working with you was was amazing, and you helped so much, and we, we had some crazy adventures. It was a crazy time. Yeah. You're uh, one of my favorites. Always, you helped me launch my career. Oh, oh wow. We, you you when, launched my career. I know, but we're... <laughs> 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 we were together all. We're a good yeah. team. Yeah. Top tier echelon level. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And... Um, I learned so much from you. It was really fun. Um, the rocker was especially crazy, but it was. But That's that was... not on here. Tell me about the rocker. That's not on here. Okay. <laughs> what do you What do you want to say about the rocker? The. Uh, Why was it especially crazy? Fox hadn't done anything like it before, and were you? That was one of two movies you were maybe maybe gonna do. I think one of was a holiday-ish film, and then that one. And yeah. Fox looked to me to do so. We said I did the KB and things to Sean Avery. Sean Avery. Who stay <laughs> there uh, for a music festival. So we did a bunch of it there. Yeah. Crazy. I remember that. So, we yeah, we went to music festivals. We went to um, the Columbia Gorge. I forget what that one's called, up in Washington State. And... We did. There was the crazy opening in Las Vegas. With uh, didn't a lot of people come? Yeah, there was like yeah. yeah, it was like a thousand people, but it was like this crazy Las Vegas opening. And but but you're right. Fox just was basically like, here, go do the press. We went to Florida and like Minneapolis. We went all over, like the places people don't usually go. Like, what was the reason? Why was it so off? The, they the only path. had natural ideas that they could make happen, so we did what I did oh. with touring comedians and music people. You and were it, making lemonade. Yeah, but it was a music as movie, so we followed that roadmap. Yeah, that yeah. actually makes a lot of sense because that's yeah. the audience. That yeah. would be the audience for that movie. Well, it didn't work. Oh, because <laughs> <laughs> it was it oh. was. Well, let, let, let's, this is a talk show, right? Sure. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> so let's talk. So, you know, this was crazy. So picture, if you will. So I'm an, I'm an actor, Jay. We, we don't know each other very well. But I was a theater actor in, in New York for 10 years. I went to NYU. Then I went to theater. I was doing theater. And I came out to L.A. And I brought this kind of comedy show out to L.A. called The New Bozina. And it... I met Mark Shulman, who was my manager, was friends with Nicole, and um, started working in film and TV right away, but smaller, a lot of smaller stuff. And then three, four years into that, I get a really great part on Six Feet Under, and that was kind of my entree into larger roles, and then that got me onto The Office, essentially. So Everybody talks about The Office. Yeah, I know. Shut up about the office. So then, no, I just I know I don't know you from the office. I know you from all that early shit. Oh, okay. All right. House of a Thousand Corpses. Okay. I know you from. Here we go. You know, Come six, on, Six Come Feet on. Under for sure. House of a Thousand Corpses. I did. I worked at Universal when you guys were shooting that movie. Oh no, the kidding. Old, the, up, the old chicken ranch. Yeah, on, yeah. On the uh, whatever that the. Oh, back that's lot. amazing. Yeah, that was my first like big kind of role. Rob's. I'm in fact your other. I'm seeing Rob. What? What? What day is today? I'm seeing him on Thursday. No. Yeah. Hi, Rob. Yeah, that's my world. And um, but um, the reason I'm going into all this is um, I was not yet forty, and I was thirty eight, thirty nine. I had been acting for a super long time, and then all of a sudden I'm on this office, and we thought it's going to get canceled. It almost <laughs> got canceled a whole bunch of times, and then it becomes like this huge phenomenon, and all of a sudden I'm propelled into like superstardom. Um, and I'd never been even like recognized before as an actor. And all of a sudden, it's like I'm on the cover of magazines and hosting Saturday Night Live yeah. and um, 
it was crazy. And then doing a bunch of movies and stuff like that. But uh, so it was it was an especially nutty time. There's nothing to kind of throw you off balance like a whole lot of fame. So you were there during the meteoric. Rock. I mean, that's that's yeah. a trajectory yeah. that not many people get to realize. Yeah, and it happened in a really short amount really of time. Really short. It happened so fast. Like, I knew Mark, your manager then, from, I forget why, but we talked early, and then it was like, we need to meet now. We need to move now. It was so fast. Yeah, because the office really launched 2004, 2005, and then, like, 2007, I'm hosting SNL and have done leads in, like, three or four different movies. And, but it, so it was all, like, in a two years, like, bam! But The Rocker, Jay, <laughs> Back to the rocker. was one of the biggest bombs in movie history. And because – but it, no real fault of our own. It's a very sweet, lovely, goofy movie. It's a perfectly fine movie. Families love it. Kids love it. It's not a great film, but it's a silly summer comedy, and it was it was totally fine. And Fox didn't know what to do with it. They kind of dumped it during Labor Day weekend on like two thousand some screens, oh. and they didn't they promote it, it at all. They yeah. threw it out there, and no one went to see it. And it was the end of summer, coming into school, and it just it tanked. And it was it was brutal because for me it was like oh here's my starring vehicle it's the it's my name it's my face uh, you know on the poster did this big tour with Nicole promoting it and um, <laughs> and no one went to see it and it was just a bomb and then it was you know it was my career definitely took a hit you know because Hollywood well Hollywood kind of goes oh not a movie star <laughs> you know oh right 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 you know hit and miss right and okay. it, so it, you know, I got to, I've gotten to do some other great leads in some other movies and and stuff like that. But it was it was rough. Oh, man, I, 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 I we're gonna get to the card, but I, I there. <laughs> Go ahead. Hesher, you remember Hesher? Yeah. Do you remember shooting Hesher? I do. I met you at the shoot. I brought my Back to the Future time machine to the set of I, Hesher. I, I have a picture of me with it. <laughs> I know you sat in it. You thought it was really cool. It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, why, why did you have a Back to the Future time machine? Why do I have this? I'm a fucking weird guy <laughs> who likes these crazy land and make-believe type things. Okay. Uh, I built that with a friend, and it ended up being like the official Universal one for a long time, and they used it for all. That's why we were there. It was the 25th anniversary. You we were built doing a bunch thing? of different things. Yeah. That wasn't like one an extra one from the movie or Correct. something like that. Correct. And Bob Gale and Bob Zemeckis had the exact same impressions. A friend of ours had... <laughs> this is... We should be talking about you, but a friend of ours... Uh, 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 by the name of Simon Wells, is a great director and writer. He uh, worked on the Back to the Future movies and was working with Bob Zemeckis and said, hey, these guys, my friends, built this thing. you got to have them bring it by. We brought it to the set. Even Bob Zemeckis said he thought we were pulling his leg. But I want to talk about you. <laughs> That's amazing, yeah. Hesher was a great film. I always confuse Hesher with the rocker, though, because they both had sort of a rocker thing, but the, but the Hesher was the other guy. It was actually the other guy was Hesher. Joseph Gordon-Levitt was the lead in Hesher. That was an independent kind of independent film, right? Film, yeah. 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 They Dark. tried to make the rocker mass market, and it wasn't uh, there yet. But we yeah. watched it. I didn't think it was a bad movie. I, I enjoyed the movie. The rocker? Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, okay. People still Go all out the time. Get, home video. Up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, any bargain bin that's out there, like you go into, and you know the dollar ninety nine DVD bin, if they still have those, or the ninety nine cent, it's it's going to be filled with rocker DVDs. Trust me. <laughs> Got to find the Best Buy to be able to get the DVD, the bargain bin. Yeah. There's fewer stores. I don't for even the think I have bin. a DVD player. They, you know, in the industry, they send the DVDs. It's like, I, how am I going to watch this? In the same way, once they made it so you could do it on the iPad and screw it through it to the TV, we were yeah. fine. Otherwise, yeah. there was about three years where we weren't watching screeners at all. But I get, can I tell you one last rocker story? Please. Can we stay on this for a second? So this is one of my favorite stories about show business. So the rocker totally bombs. The office is just starting up again, season, I don't know, maybe four or five. I can't remember which season it was. And I'm driving. You have to get in there ass early to the office because, you know, you got to get your makeup on at like 6.15, ready to shoot at 7.00. And then, so I lived out in Agora Hill, so I was driving, leaving at 5, 5.30 wow, right. in the morning. So I'm listening to the old uh, L.A. icons, Kevin and Bean, on K-Rock, back when people used to listen to radio and not to podcasts, <laughs> right? And they're on K-Rock. And I had come in on K-Rock and promoted The Rocker. 
and I'm driving. I'm just devastated. I'm driving, and I have to go Alex see. Alex Warren over on Fairfax. Yeah. I know where you're talking about. And I have to drive in and see all my office mates, and my movie's bombed. That's going to be awkward. What if, they're not going to know what to say. And I'm on, I'm listening to Kevin and Bean, and they're like, okay, hey, it's Kevin and Bean. You know, they talk really fast, like DJs. And they're like, what, um, so... Uh, let's look at the movies from this weekend. <laughs> and this and this movie, Tropic Thunder, was doing pretty well. And blah blah blah. And they're like, "Hey, wait a second. Where's Rain's movie? I don't even see it on this list." Like Rain, they're like, "I don't see it on that. It's not even on the top ten list." Wait, what's this? It came in twelfth for the weekend. I thought it was just released. It was a big movie. Oh no! Oh, it bombed. Oh God, that's gotta hurt. Poor Rain. Oh my God. And I'm on the 101 freeway over by, like, <laughs> Woodman. And I'm sobbing in my car at, like, 5.57 in the morning, um, just in my Prius. like, <laughs> And uh, it was really uh, humiliating. Um, and I'll never forget that, uh, that moment. And uh, that's showbiz, folks. That's how it works.